Hi, my name is Terry Hewlett. Um, I think a lot of people in this room know me. I've been here at the OFA conference for a while. Uh, I'm with Intel. Uh, I would want to start out by saying that uh, you know, Intel is clearly supportive of a lot of the things going on in Finiban and everything else. I am, by job, at an Ethernet partisan. So if I <laughs> if I uh, lean in that direction, I apologize up front, but that's, that's my job. That's fine. <laughs> uh, and Felix Marty uh, from Chelsea is uh, the other co-speaker for this this update. And before we get started, uh, Felix, uh, I'd like to congratulate you and Chelsea on getting uh, T4 out. Good job. Thank you very much. Another, another new iWarp part, and uh, you know we're uh, looking forward to competing with it in the market. Um, anyway, so that's all the product stuff we're going to do. We're not going to talk about anything about our products. We're going to give you. We're going to do this in about 15 minutes and get us 15 minutes ahead of schedule. And hopefully the rest of the speakers today can keep us on schedule, keep us that you know 15 minutes ahead, and uh, we'll wrap up early. Uh, one, so I'm going to start off by handing it immediately over to. Yes. Yeah, sorry. So. Uh, what we have done over the last few years is come to these OFA meetings and present what we want to do in the future. And uh, so I think it has been about three years ago that we talked about memory extensions for uh, OFET. And we implemented these fast register, non shared memory region, RDMA read with invalidate, invalidate local S tag, essentially a bunch of new verbs that uh, we uh, you know, uh, contributed. Then, uh, so with all of these new features, applications or ULPs now have various choices how they want to do memory management. Then, another thing uh, that we did, which is uh, iWork specific is peer-to-peer uh, -peer support. So un unlike uh, InfiniBand, iWarp has uh, a few steps that need to be followed when you want to set up a connection. We implemented this in OFET also a couple years ago, and more recently this is now in the process of being uh, uh, done in the IETF. The draft is co-authored by folks from VMware, Intel, and OpenGrid. Now, last year I talked about potential uh, features that we would like to put into iWarp 2.0. Uh, and uh, the main idea, and this was touched on multiple times in this uh, conference, is that uh, Yes, OFET supports multiple RDMA transports, and they, most of these transports, they have the same base set of verbs, but there are some small differences uh, in uh, semantics, or some of the verbs are not supported on one RDMA transport versus another. So this makes the application or ULP uh, writer's job more difficult, because you have to have conditional code that says, oh, do I run on iWarp, do I run on IB, or also if you don't catch the small differences in semantics, you might run into some bugs. So uh, one of the things you wanted to do is really go ahead and say, let's try to my, uh, make the transport more, more similar. And uh, what, what we did in that direction is uh, not called iWarp 2.0, we call it uh, RDMA protocol extensions. It's a draft that was worked on by Broadcom, Chelsea, and Intel, and we just submitted it, I think, about a month ago, ahead of the ITF meeting in Prague. So what are the extensions? Obviously, uh, iWarp was missing uh, fetch and, uh, atomic operations in general. So we looked, what, we looked at what OFED is providing today, uh, fetch and add, swap, compare and swap, and defined these for iWarp as well. Uh, similarly, another th a feature that is missing in iWarp currently is immediate data. So, uh, you know, application writers could work around this issue by uh, using an RDMA write with immediate on InfiniBand, but then on, on an RNIC they would have to do an RDMA write followed by a, uh, an explicit uh, uh, send. 
So all of these uh, wire protocol changes that we are proposing are geared at uh, what I mentioned before to make the transports look uh, more more similar. But uh, the uh, I like. The, the transport is only one side of, of, of the story because the applications really talk uh, verbs and I'll let Terry talk more to the verbs problem. So uh, just to you know, kind of close on that piece, the, the, the ITF draft is, has, been, has been submitted. Uh, the work group uh, for ITF, the storm group, group is, is uh, looking at it and we, you know, we expect to work through that normal process in the ITF to uh, get those updates to the specifications uh, in, in, that, in that world. One thing the ITF does not do, though, is they do not address verbs. Um, this is a, a quirk in the definition, in my opinion, of ITF, but you know, they get to decide what they want to do. They do not define the verbs layer, and the verbs layer is a specification that was, post was delivered by the RDMA consortium and submitted as an IETF draft and, you know, just, and languished there, never went anywhere. So it's a specification that's out there that we've all followed. And, you know, if you look at that specification, you'll find that it's extremely similar to the IV verb specification, uh, though as, you, as, as Felix just pointed out, there are some differences and we're trying to uh, close the gap on those differences. So at this point, what we're doing is we're looking for a home to do, do this verbs work, we, what we want to do is take that RDMA consortium document, we want to modify it to add support for the, the new transport protocols that uh, IETF is working their way through. Uh, and you know, there, there is really no logical home for this work. Um, what we did was we made a proposal to OFA board to, on the March 14th to do this work, to create a working group in OFA to do this work inside of OFA. Uh, we retracted that proposal on March 17th because it was clear that the, there was a, a lot of misunderstanding what our objective was, as well as there was a bunch of fundamental concern around uh, OFA getting into the business of writing specifications or, or writing documents that multiple companies were going to follow for hardware and software development. Uh, I think that issue needs to be resolved. I currently am, am, am a fan of OFA getting into that space, but this presentation really is not about, uh, you know, getting this debate. I mean, OFA does need to have this debate, and if o OFA decides they want to get into the uh, into some piece of, of defining specifications that, that I think are beneficial to OFA, then we, we wholeheartedly support that. If not, then, we'll, then we will go do this work elsewhere and then bring the results of that back to OFA for implementation in the API. Uh, so the, you know, what I'd like to say is we will have a, the, the, the RDMA consortium document updated uh, by next year's workshop uh, to can continue on with our progress as we have in the last few years. And if anyone in the audience or you know of anyone that would like to participate in this effort, uh, please contact me. My email address is up here and uh, you know, we, we, we're going to do this completely in the open and, and we'll figure out the right organization to do it within. So in conclusion, uh, I'd like to you know, point, uh, remind people that iWarp today delivers an IP routable implementation of the OFA API for Ethernet, uh, for enterprise data centers. We do that today, it's out there, and uh, many companies, companies are following it. Uh, we, the iWarp commu community, are committed to evolving the iWarp uh, API and the iWarp protocol to be more functionality similar to InfiniBand, it's to ease the efforts that uh, the development community has when they try to make certain something runs on iWarp or InfiniBand, and we, we're committed to continue to do that, and you know, that's our current work to, to, that we want to talk about this, uh, in this, uh, this workshop. Any questions? Yes. That's, it's hard, hard to hear you, sir. The, uh, it will enable the iWarp hardware vendors to deliver software hardware combinations that provide appropriate semantics to, impl to, to implement that functionality. It's virtually guaranteed it, the, the changes that we make will not be identical to the IB verbs. We will make them as close as we can make them, but there are, you know, uh, iWarp is a layered protocol on top of TCP. There's some certain things that we will have to, to work around to make things 
close as, as, as close as possible to the IB verbs. So you know, we as the IWARP community will, will follow these specs, get something very close, and uh, you know, close the, 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 remove the differences between InfiniBand and, and, uh, and, and IWARP so, as much as possible. So you, you foresee that even after this work, there will still be API visible differences I, to I developers? find it difficult to believe that we, we will ever get to the point they will be absolutely identical. Well, there needs to be a difference. Yeah, so uh, I, I would like to say that, you know, there are differences today, and uh, we're trying to close the gap, right? So I, I don't know how close we are now, uh, but it's a lot of the work, if you look at the wire protocol, uh, it's very flexible, and a lot of the work to make it the same has to, be ha has to happen in this, in this verbs discussion. So the way we, we envision, envision, envision the, uh, the protocol on the wire is that it's flexible and we're going to define exactly how the warps work in, later and we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll match them to InfiniBand. If you add a media, it's an atomics. So it seems like, uh, from my perspective, that, that closes a big annoying gap. Right, absolutely. So that's, uh, yeah. you know, there are, that, 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 that's a goal essentially. So I, I, I guess I, I, uh, I'm not understanding, if, if you add immediate and you add atomics, where are the remaining differences? Well, for, for example, there are differences in error handling. There are differences in the semantics of an RTMA write. So an RTMA write uh, in the iWarp world just means that the write has been submitted to the TCP stream. But uh, okay. in the infinite, and so a completion yep. doesn't mean that the write made it to the peer. I okay. believe in the InfiniBand world, an RTMA write completing actually means that the payload has at least reached the peer uh, HBA. It, it does not? No. Okay, so I, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, then I thought there was a difference that maybe there isn't. I, I think it's just practical for us to assume that, 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 that since there were different organizations that created these specs with different objectives, that there's going to be some differences that we never completely close. Our objective, though, is to reduce those differences as much as, as, as reasonably possible to, to ease the work for the software community. Yes? Sir. Uh, I was on the RDMA consortium when that verbs document was written. I was on the RDMA consortium when the verbs document was written, and it was wholly uh, contributed by the IBTA members. The IBTA software working group submitted their verbs document to the RDMA consortium. Correct. Right? So there really was no difference at the time they started. <coughs> well, but there, that document doesn't define atomics, for example. Right? So you might want to say it's a subset of uh, the IB verbs, and that's possible. That's what you're trying to address, to right. you know, kind of get them so to the same again. Yeah, John, the, the, the document does have differences. There are, they're not a lot, but there are differences. A suggestion is that it would be appropriate for Open Fabrics to publish a document identifying the differences in its implementation of the libib verbs library when it runs on an iWarp device. This isn't a standard, it's just documenting what is going on in our libraries. I think it's a, it's a great suggestion. Um, and it, don't worry it, about know, standardizing I mean, verbs. We, what we'd like to do there is document what is different between the APIs not necessarily what's different than specifications or any kind of specification. I think it's a great suggestion. The software community would, would, would be able to use that. <laughs> right, well, that's what, my right, first right, question right. was, who will, who will benefit from revising your RDMA iWarp verbs? And I would say probably no one, because no one will read it. They'll read the IB one or they'll read yours, but they won't understand what the differences are, which is the key piece of information you're trying to convey. I, I, I'm still, uh, I'm sorry, I missed okay. some of what you said. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I, it just doesn't seem to me that making another verb specification is going to benefit anyone. I think what you said, creating another, you don't see how creating another verb specification will benefit anyone. And I, you know, that's not our objective to create a different one, but it's to create, is to take the document that we all followed 
to implement, to implement our current parts and expand it to be as close as we can get it to the IB Verbs document. And that RDMA consortium document is released, it's out in the open today because it was a released document from the RDMA consortium. And so we clearly will start with that document and make the minimum set of modifications to it possible to reduce the, the differences. Right. Let me add, go, go ahead. Have, have you found an individual in the local Congress community who really knows the verbs uh, and APIs as they are now that will participate with you? So we, we have we have not, uh, we, we, you know, we, as you know, we proposed starting the working group and then, the, you know, the work, that process got stopped and so therefore we have, we, you know, we've not continued on that. We're trying to go figure out if OFA wants to be involved in, uh, right, in developing this document. If the OFA would like to be, we certainly, the IWARP uh, community, are willing to do that work under a broad set of limitations. Uh, in, in you know in, in in the OFA if if that's what it takes, um, but you know we 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 need to we need the OFA organization to decide they want to work with us. I'm sorry, I thought you were part of OFA. I and our proposal was you know withdrawn because of the objections. Well, the, we I think we shouldn't go over that ground again, right? The point the point I'm trying to make to you, and I'm making it in how we handled when the RDMA consortium approached us in 2006, I think, Jim. We put together a group of people who really knew where OpenIB was and a group of people who knew about the RDMA. And, and they worked together and brought RDMA over Ethernet in to Open Fabrics. And what I'm suggesting is that for you to proceed, you will be better off if you find a member of OFA who's technically qualified and experienced in how the verbs work to be part of your work. So yeah, absolutely, we, 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 not only do we have those people in our own respective companies, right, because we are currently delivering both of us in the OFA community, uh, you know, we would like anyone else that wants to be involved to, to get involved, you know, to contact us and get involved. We're, we're quite open to that, Bill. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just one last comment. The, uh, the objective is to have a unified interface for all the RDMA transports in, in OFET. So yeah, it's really not about you know, a new document, right? It's, but there's a certain process that we all need to follow to get there. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment since that, um, the, there was some conversation that was referred to several times during this short presentation. Um, and that not all the people here were uh, participants of that conversation where you brought this as a proposal and then uh, you withdrawn it. I think that uh, it's fair for everyone to know that there was a strong pushback, at least from a significant portion of the uh, OFA uh, promoters to this idea uh, due to uh, several concerns. And uh, one of them, I think it was um, not by chance, naturally emerged on this uh, on this conversation during these last few minutes in the sense that uh, OFA does not need a new verb specification. OFA is about implementing open source software stacks with an API that uh, follows uh, the semantics of um, at least one verb specification and could be modified to follow the semantics of uh, many other ideas as it, uh, as it did over the last um, several years. Uh, even uh, recently, uh, new semantics were added to the uh, OFA stacks. And uh, there's nothing preventing the IWARP uh, vendors from coming with uh, new functionality that needs uh, maybe specific uh, extensions uh, to the existing APIs. Uh, the proposal is to, or at least the way I interpreted it, because that's the way it was written, was to uh, make OFA the standardization body for the portion of the IWAR specs that ITF doesn't want to take. Uh, and that is what uh, the pushback was about. Okay. Thank you for the commercial. Any questions? <laughs>